Hi, now let's look at data proc. Data proc is a fully managed and highly scalable service for running Apache Spark, Apache Flink, Presto, or in fact 30 plus open source tools and frameworks. You can use data proc for data lake modernization, ETL, uh, secure data science, all of these things are fully integrated with Google Cloud, and it comes at a very fraction of the cost. If you come from big data world, uh, you understand the Hadoop services, Apache Spark, and a lot of open source projects. But setting that up is a big task, and you have to manage a lot of servers, configurations. What uh, Google provides is a managed service at a very fraction of the cost. You only pay for the resources that you use. This way, it lowers the total cost of ownership of open source projects. You can spin up an auto scaling cluster in 90 seconds on custom machines, which is practically impossible if you're setting up a Hadoop cluster. It uh, not only just that, but it also provides you all sorts of data encryption uh, and unified security model that's basically embedded and it's built inside your cluster. You can also uh, accelerate your data science with purpose-built clusters. So you can have clusters and machine types defined for data science use cases at a planet scale. Now, what is Apache Hadoop? So if you come from big data world, you'll probably understand this, but you, if you have not been around the big data world, then Apache Hadoop, it's a distributed file system. It is based on master and slave architecture and a HDFS cluster basically consists of name nodes and data nodes and data is replicated across data nodes by default three for highly fault tolerant system. Uh, the concept of Hadoop came in in terms of separating the compute and storage. So the compute happens separately and the storage happens separately. This is a very famous uh, diagram in different representation of all of the Hadoop uh, clusters or in fact all of the Hadoop uh, uh, and most of these are open source projects so all of the open source projects so as a storage layer you have uh, Hadoop HDFS then Hadoop yarn which is the resource uh, manager then you have Zookeeper and Ambari to do the coordination and management of everything that runs on Hadoop uh, Apache Ranger is used for security. Then you have different kind of capabilities and that's where this whole processing thing comes into play. So for in-memory processing, you have Apache Ignite, Spark. And again, this is not an exhaustive list. This is uh, some of the famous one that gets used, but there are a lot of them. Stream processing, Flink, Storm, Kafka, uh, SQL over Hadoop, Apache Hive, Apa um, Impala, NoSQL database, Apache SBase, Sp Search Engine, Solar, Data Piping, NiFi, Flume, Scoop, Machine Learning, Madlib, uh, Spark Mlib, uh, Scripting, Pig, that's been used. Uh, just because we are here, it's very important to know why this was called Pig, because pigs, as an animal, they eat everything. And this uh, Apache uh, pig could uh, literally consume any kind of data. So that's how this funny name came in. In terms of uh, the scheduler, Uzi or the Airflow, and uh, Google has Cloud Composer, which is a managed service of Airflow that we looked at, then it supports a variety of data formats. So, you know, this, this ensemble of uh, different open source projects, which is, is referred as Apache Hadoop ecosystem. And Google's data proc provides you a managed service to use all of these services. Now, again, 
why would you use data prop on Google versus either on-premise setup or uh, you know any other cloud providers like AWS or Azure? There's primarily these reasons, low cost. So data proc is priced at only one cent per virtual CPU in the cluster per hour on top of the other uh, cloud platform resources. At, uh, data and also data proc clusters can use preemptible instances, which has a very low compute prices. Data proc charges only for what is really used with second by second billing and a low one minute minimum billing period. So second by second per minute billing period, that's just amazing to utilize such, an, such a huge collection of open source projects. It is super fast without using data proc. It can take from five to 30 minutes to create a Spark and Hadoop cluster on-premises or through any of the infrastructure as a service providers. By comparison, data proc clusters are quick to start, scale, and shut down with each one of these operations taking 90 seconds or less on an average. It's completely integrated, which is very important aspect of it because Hadoop itself can only solve your data processing job uh, requirements, but it needs to have integration to different services like to be able to push data into BigQuery, to be able to pull data from cloud storage, to be able to push data into Bigtable and having all sorts of logging and monit monitoring integrated with it. Otherwise, you again depend on some open source logging or monitoring tool. So integration is a very important uh, aspect of it. Then enterprise security. So when you create a data proc cluster, you can enable Hadoop secure mode via Kerberos by adding a security configuration. Containerized OSS jobs. Uh, OSS refers to open source uh, projects. When you build your uh, OSS jobs like Apache Spark on data proc, you can quickly containerize them with Kubernetes and deploy them anywhere there's a GKE cluster. This gives a lot of flexibility with more and more uh, softwares and the ecosystem moving towards microservices world, everything is being containerized and deployed on Kubernetes cluster. So to be able to containerize any of these open source uh, projects or, or, or open source modules and run it on Kubernetes. Uh, one example is uh, that I've seen across is the Apache Flink. Flink is used a lot of time for stream processing. So if you can containerize that and deploy it on Kubernetes, that's a big win. So with this, now let's look at Composer, uh, which is the, the managed version of Apache Airflow. It's a workflow orchestration service. So you author, you schedule, and you monitor your pipelines that can run uh, across hybrid. So by hybrid means on cloud, on premises, or multi-cloud environments. It's built on Apache Airflow. So it's open source, operated using Python. Python. So there is no vendor lock-in. Um, whatever DAGs, uh, it's called DAG. Uh, whatever workflows that you script, you can export it and run in any environment. Um, if we look at the basic architecture of how basically the Composer works, right? So at the center of it, you have data engineers. What data engineers do, they author what we call DAGs, which is basically workflow. It's a it's, it's called directed acyclic graphs. It contains individual pieces of work called tasks. So each one of these individual pieces, they are tasks and they are connected together with dependencies 
keeping data flow into account. So how the data flows, what are the dependencies between different tasks? It's a, a, it's a linked uh, process of all of those tasks with their dependencies. That's what is a DAG. And it's represented, it's basically represented using Python. So it's very readable and uh, you can you can script that workflow. Now, when they script that uh, the workflow is ready, what's important is to have a user interface uh, that lets you see all of these DAGs and their tasks. So it gives you a visual representation of connected tasks with their dependencies. You can view logs um, and do a bit of a debugging and resolution of problems with DAG. So that's what this user interface provides, which of course runs on a web server. Uh, it's, a, it's a handy user interface to inspect and you know and we will look at in the lab section how it is how easy it is to look at DAGs to understand the dependency between tasks and also their logs when it has been run to complete a monitoring and schedule part of it. Then you have schedulers. So schedulers which handle both uh, triggering schedule workflows and submitting tasks to the executor to run it. Executors are basically uh, the agents which handle uh, the task running part. Now, there is a metadata database required. It's used by the scheduler, executor, and web server to store state. So all of these, they store their state into metadata DB. So how does the user interface look like? It's very simple. It's, it's very intuitive in terms of each one of these uh, workflow, which are DAGs, they are listed here. And then there is status, whether they are running um, or um, they, they have failed. They, there are about uh, six to eight in the variation of status that you can look at each one of the, in fact, each one of the tasks within a workflow. So now with that, uh, let's see how Google makes this possible. So if we looked at the basic architecture, there, are, there were primarily three parts. The first part is, is, the, is the data engineers authoring the DAGs. Then the second part is the web server, which is giving you a, gr a graphical interface to view these things. And the third part is everything that is required to make it happen. So if I need to break it down, this is the first part. This is the second part. And then everything in terms of infrastructure that's required to make it happen. And if I can put numbers to it, this. So now number one, that's basically the coding part of it. You know that you can use any of the ID. Number two, which is to provide a user interface, graphical uh, interface, which represents DAX. And number three is all of the component that is required, whether it's a Kubernetes cluster, whether it's a cloud storage, whether it's a uh, Postgres database, all of these things. So how Google helps is Google calls uh, it environments. So cloud composers, you basically create an environment. They are self-contained Airflow deployments based on Google Kubernetes Engine. So everything runs on Google Kubernetes Engine. Now, because it has a UI and it can be used for hybrid and multi-cloud capabilities, 
the architecture typically spins across whether it needs to have a public IP, private IP can architecture, or a private IP with domain restricted sharing. So basically identifying your domain. So let's take an example of public IP because you probably want to use it for hybrid or multi-cloud requirements. So in case of a public IP architecture, this is how the architecture looks like. And I'll map it to number one, number two, and number three. Now, number one is was basically the user authoring, you know, and that they can author anywhere. Number two was to have that uh, UI interface. So that's this route. Now, for any user to be able to access that, and it could be accessed from within uh, Google's network or outside the Google network, the way Google manages is, is that Google defines customer project and a tenant project. So what tenant project is, tenant project is where Google spins up everything which is required for the web access. And the customer project is where Google basically spins up everything that is required to run underneath, uh, to, to run the Composer environment in terms of workers, infrastructure and everything. So on the right side, again, you have uh, identity aware proxy, which identifies this um, the user is legit. Then the web server, it's basically run on app engine and app engine, because the web server requires connection to metadata server, it uses a Cloud SQL proxy. So Cloud SQL, which is spun up inside customer project, it uses the Cloud SQL proxy to, to do that. Same goes for Cloud SQL storage. Now, when you co come on to the customer project, the Kubernetes cluster, this is where all of the schedulers, workers, and ev everything that's being uh, configured, that's part of the customer project. And then you have environments bucket. And this environment bucket is what stores DAGs, plugins, data dep dependencies, and airflow and logs. So when a user writes a workflow, which is a DAG file written in Python, they need to upload it to a, to a cloud storage bucket, which is spun up as part of a Cloud Composer environment. So Cloud Composer environment is primarily the GKE cluster, uh, the Cloud SQL environment, uh, G um, cloud storage bucket and the Airflow uh, web server, basically, which is on App Engine uh, Flex. So this is what uh, Google is spins up every time it is creating an environment. And it splits it in a way that it can separate out access to web server and contain all of the workers infrastructure as part of customer project. So when you write your workflow for Airflow to, to identify or to uh, basically use that workflow, you need to upload your workflow to the bucket. And there's a, a location inside the bucket called DAX, and that's where you uh, update the files. So I hope, uh, uh, this this was helpful in terms of understanding the Cloud Composer environment. And we will spin up a Cloud Com Composer environment as part of the lab. And uh, we will try to spin up a data proc cluster. We run a Hadoop job and then we will destroy, a uh, destroy that cluster as part of uh, dependent tasks within a workflow. Thank you.